wheel, and the Father is the outer wheel, and he allows you to get deep inside the middle wheel, for it is the middle wheel who is working and digging out the cross and burning out the cross and molding you and shaping you and is working with you because he's got you not just on the wheel. <laughs> he's got you on the wheel. <laughs> In the middle of the wheel. The same wheel that spun the angels into existence. Ah, the same wheel that spun creation into existence. Ah, the same wheel is working in you if you're born again. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Hallelujah. <laughs> in the potter house why did Yahweh make the earth round mm. <laughs> it is a reflection of his son the wheel in the middle of the wheel yes. <sighs> Yahweh has made the firmaments Yahweh has made the earth Yahweh has established all the ends of the earth Mishle 34 what is his name let's go to Mishle 34 uh -oh. Mishle Proverbs oh. Proverbs 34. Hallelujah. No more religious spirits. No more religiosity. Let's get deep down to the things of the potter's house. Yes, yes, yes. The potter's house. Because in the potter's house, the potter is that wheel. And Yahshua is the wheel in the middle of the wheel. And you are the work on the wheel. How many know that Yahweh wants to look, teach his children how to do wheelies in the things of Yahweh? How many were children that used to do the hula hoop? Yeah. Wheelies. How many were children used to pop a wheelie on a bicycle or on a motorcycle? What does it mean? What does it mean to pop a wheelie? To go round and go whoop, whoop. <laughs> Anyone getting this? Oh yeah. yeah. When does that wheel stop spinning? Yeah. Never. The heavens declare the glory of Yahweh, and the earth showeth forth his handiwork. So, uh, Proverbs 34. I'm enveloped this morning. I'm sorry, I'm enveloped. Proverbs 30 and 4. Who has gone up to heaven and come down? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Ha! Who has bound the waters in a garment? Hello? That wheel in the middle of a wheel. Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? God, right? Wrong. God is a title. It is not a proper name. It is a, it is a noun. It is an improper noun. It is not a name. Amen? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If you know it. Back to Yechezkel. Is anyone enjoying? I'll try that again. Is anyone enjoying? You are the piece of work in the middle of the wheel, the wheel in the middle. You are that work. And guess when that piece of work is not on that wheel? Never. As long as the sun keeps shining, as long as the moon keeps shining, as long as the stars give their light, you will never be removed from the wheel. Because Yeshua said in Yochanan 6.37, He who comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. The beautiful thing about going to the potter's house is, You'll never be cast out. You'll never be told to leave the potter's house. You can get excommunicated from a religious system. You can get excommunicated or asked to leave by your family or by your wife or by your husband. But in the potter's house, as long as you stay teachable, you'll never be asked to leave. As long as you at wheel keeps spinning, you and I are the one on that wheel. You and I are gonna will never be taken off that wheel. And that will never be divorced from that wheel because I am persuaded that neither death or life or principalities or powers or nakedness or sword or peril or famine, nothing in this life or in the life to come huh, can separate us from the love of Yahweh that is in the Messiah, Yahshua. Somebody give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. Nothing, nothing, nothing can take me off of that wheel. Nothing can take you off of that wheel. Hallelujah. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. We're on the wheel in the middle of the wheel, and the wheel keeps on spinning. 
and the angels got their strength and got their ministry and got their creation and have their sustenance. What sustains the malachim? The wheel. The wheel. Hallelujah. Go with me back to Yechezkel. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Arise and go to the potter's house. And there I will cause you to hear my words. Where is the potter's house? It's where the wheel is spinning in the things of Zion. It is where the wheel is spinning in the ways of Yahweh. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. I keep saying hallelujah. 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 I'm enveloped this morning. Hallelujah. I'm enveloped this morning. Hallelujah. How many feel enveloped by his love this morning? By his goodness this morning? They're not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of Yahweh unto salvation to all who believe. To the Jew first and then the non-Jew. Hallelujah, somebody. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Yechezkel 3 and 13. Yechezkel 3 and 13. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, go jump, I'm sorry, go back to Ezekiel 121. Okay. Ezekiel 121. Let's take a stay in Ezekiel 1. Then those went, these went. When those stood, these stood. Talking about Malachim, angels. When those were lifted up high from the earth, the wheels were lifted up together with them. For the spirit of the... For the spirit of the living creatures were in the wheel. Where do we get our spirit from? Where do we get our being from? Where do we get our breath from? Let everything that hath breath praise the wheel. Let everything that hath breath praise the wheel. So the angels get their what? Their being. Their strength. Their ministry. Their mitzvot. Their, their deeds. The wheel. Because the wheel keeps on what? Keeps on spinning. And you know when you're gonna die? Can we talk? You know when you're you and I are gonna die? When the wheel stops spinning. <laughs> but guess what? That wheel is never gonna stop oh, spinning. Hey. In the potter's house. Yeshua said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. He didn't say, I've just come so you can fly away and have a resurrection body after you rise from the dead when I return. That's true, that's eternal life. But now is abundant life. And that abundant life is not found in the church system that is bathed and tanned with worshiping the sun. And neither is it found in the apostate synagogue or in Islam. They get on television and they tell you Islam is a religion. Islam means peace. It does not mean peace. It means a slave of God. Okay? They can't even get that right. You with, you with me? It is the wheel that gives you breath. It is the wheel that gives you spirit. It is the wheel, the wheel of Israel, because the Father is the outer wheel, and Yeshua is the wheel in the middle of the wheel. And that's what it means to be born again. Yeshua is in you, and you are on him and in him. What does it mean to be in Yeshua? It means like a piece of gum. Stay stuck to the wheel. You're on that wheel. And as long as he keeps spinning, what's he going to spin? His ways. Torah. His father's ways. If Yeshua, that wheel ever starts spinning the ways of the Gentiles, we can turn to that wheel and say, futility, falsehood, vanity. I'm glad that the wheel spins out the things of his father. He keeps spinning. And the more you stay on that wheel, the more love you'll have for the Jewish people. The more desire you'll have to be part of returning Israel. The more part and, and boldness and vision you'll have to take your place in the two-house restoration of his people Israel. Talk to me some now. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Baruch Hashem, Rifka, you missed a lot, sweetheart. Turn to Rifkin and say, you missed a lot. Let's try that again. You missed a lot. <laughs> Hallelujah. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Because the spirit of the living creatures, how many know that we are homo sapiens? We are living creatures. It's in the wheels. What wheels? The father wheel, the son wheel, and the ruach wheel. And this is too good. This is just too good. 
What does ay, ay, ay. what does the wheel create as it spins? Ay, ay, ay. Not only conforms you and molds you into the vessel that Yahweh wants you to be, you're the work on the wheel. It creates what? The sound of a mighty rushing wind. And so it is with everyone who is born of the Ruach. For you will not say, there it is, or there, go there, or go here, or go there. For the wind blows where it listeth, and no one knows where and how and where it's going. And so it is with those who are born of the Ruach. When you and I are the piece of work on the wheel in the potter's house, we will have, we will have the Ruach leading and guiding us. For as many as are led by the Ruach of Yahweh, Romans 8, they are the sons of Yahweh. Yeah. Give and praise somebody in the house of Yahweh. Yeah. Romans 8, 12, for as many as are led by the Ruach of Yahweh, and that Ruach comes as a byproduct of you being stuck in, his, in the palm of his hands, being guided and grounded in the palm of his hands as the wheel in the middle of the wheel turns out an Israelite obedient lifestyle. And the wind comes out of the wheel. Abraham. The father, the outer wheel. The son, the inner wheel. And where's all this activity taking place? In the potter's house. In the potter, the Greek word for father, pater. In the potter's house. Brothers and sisters, you and I, as the people of Israel, we are that work. You have risen out of the slumber of the ways of vanity of your forefathers. You have risen out of those houses of worship that you were entrenched in, that looked so right, uh, that felt so good. But you've arisen out of those houses and taken a seat into the potter's house. Raise me up, Ted. I don't like screaming. And what was, yes, I do. And what was your confession? How did you get into the potter's house? Father Yahweh, please forgive me. I didn't know your name. I knew your title. I didn't know I was part of the historic people of Israel. And the Father says, what's your confession to get into the potter's house? I confess that my, I have come to the ends of the earth, from the ends of the earth. The fathers, my religious fathers, have inherited lies and vanity. They're, they're just futility. Yahweh says, come in, take a look. For there I will cause you to hear my words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He loves me, yeah, yeah, yeah. He loves me, yeah, yeah. You think about that. Yahweh says, I will allow you to hear my words. Where? If you get up. You're not raptured. You're not raptured into the potter's house. You gotta get up and get into the potter's house. And I will cause you, when Yahweh says, I love you so much, I'll break you and bend you and humble you until you cry out to me and say, surely our fathers have inherited lies, and, 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 and now I am coming to you, and I will know you as Yahweh, not just as Lord or God. I will know you intimately. Yeah. Yeah. Yeshua said, Father, I have guarded them. I have revealed thy name to those thou hast given me. I have given them thy name. Yeshua, speaking of the anti-Messiah, says, another will come in his own name. And him you will accept. I come in my Father's name. Yahshua, Yahweh saves. And me you do not receive. He says, Father, I have given. John 17. I'm just going to be led by the rule. I don't care what's on those notes. Come on. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, the notes are worthless. The notes are worthless. The notes are worthless. Yochanan 17. Give me one proof, Rabbi. Give me one proof. Give me one example of the ways of the nations. Go to John. Yochanan 17. Yochanan 17. I'm enveloped this morning. I'm feeling enveloped. I'm feeling goosey. I'm feeling high in the ruach. I've got two tickets to paradise. Me and Rivka are sitting in the front row huh, of the potter's house. Huh. We're seeing that wheel in the middle of the wheel. Huh. And we are the work on that wheel. He's allowing us to hear his word in the potter's house. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. A doctrine, and I don't want to get into this, a doctrine of the nations, of the Gentiles, is the rapture. Can I prove to you in one verse, would you be humble enough in the potter's house? 
Would you be humble enough this morning? It will allow me the privilege in one verse of blowing away the rapture theory. In one verse, John 17, 15. Ready? Let's read it together. Here is a doctrine of the Gentiles. John 17, 15. Who's praying? Who's praying? Who's praying? The son of Yahweh, the son of man. In the great Kohen Hagadol prayer, the high priestly what? Prayer. This is not a rabbi talking. This is not a preacher talking. This is the blessed, only begotten son of Yahweh talking. And watch what he says to his father in his role as the high priest, the Kohen Hagadol. He says in Yochanan 17, 15, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but keep them from the evil one. That's right. One verse. verse. No argument, no debate, no going back and forth. And it's Yeshua praying. Yeshua says, Father, I'm I'm not praying that you should take them out. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) And it's not with the rapture. But with the rapture, don't blame. Don't be too hard on these folks. It's a way of the vanity and futility, the great escape. But when they see themselves as part of the people of Israel, they'll gladly join their Jewish people and go through the great tribulation only to rise before the millennial to rule and reign with Yeshua on earth for a thousand years. I will gladly get left behind. Yeah, me too. In that day, two shall be in the bed. One will be taken, one will be left behind. Two will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, one will be left behind. In that day, two shall be in the field. One will be taken. One, and now which one is which? And the disciples came to him. The Talmudian came to him and said, Rabbi, where? Taken where? So the question was, those who are taken, where are they taken? Luke 17. The church says, those who are taken are going, Woo! They're taken away, and y'all are going to be left behind if you don't get your life right with God. Just the opposite. The disciples said, where are they going to be taken? And what did Yeshua say? For the eagle gathers. Wherever the carcass is, there will the eagle be, eagles be gathered. So the bodies of the dead, wherever the carcass is, the eagles and the birds of prey will be there. So those who are taken away are those who are taken away where? To be eaten by the eagles. To be punished. They're taken to judgment. Even as in the days of Noah, the flood came and took them all away. So the ones who are taken away are taken to be judged. Pray to be left behind. Pray to be left behind. I'm sorry, sister. I love you enough to tell you the truth. Because the disciples didn't understand this either. They said, okay, okay, master. Where are we going to be? Who's taken where? And she said, where the birds of prey are. That's where the unrighteous are taken. You don't want to be taken. Pray to be left behind. But that's just an example of something you'll never learn in the potter's house. In the potter's house, you'll learn what it means. Hello? You'll learn what it means to love Yeshua the way he wants to be loved. Go back with me to the potter's house. Yechezkel 18. Is anyone enjoying? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know when you start teaching about these, these very, very sensitive doctrines, they're very sensitive. You know why? Because you were taught these things from you were about this high, right? Some things don't go easy. Some things stick around for a while. Okay, but are you Israel? In the potter's house, you will learn how to let these things go. Okay? The Bible teaches resurrection. Do I plan on, on being caught up? Absolutely, right out of the grave. Right out of the grave. <laughs> Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Matter of fact, like I tell my Wednesday night uh, yeshiva, if you can give me one scripture showing the rapture, I will give you $10,000. One. I'll tell you what, give me half a scripture, and you'll get 5000 There are some things that appear to be in the rapture, Let's not get into it. <laughs> Yechezkel 18. Back to Yechezkel 18. I don't want to lose my train of thought. Yechezkel 18. Oh. Yermiahu 18. 
Jeremiah 18. Jeremiah 18. The wheel is who? Moshiach. Who are you and I? Look at verse 3. I went down to the potter's house. Hopefully when you come here every Shabbat morning, brothers and sisters, you're coming to the potter's house. I hope and pray this is not just another congregation. This is not just another assembly. This is the Miami Beach Israel Revival. And I pray that every week when you are here, Amen. you will see yourself on that wheel changing during the worship, changing during the ministry, changing dur during the singing, changing during the teaching, changing when we love and, 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 and correct one another, telling the truth in love. I hope and pray that you see yourself as that piece of work on the wheel each and every Shabbat. In the front the Yahweh, oh, that we would be worthy of being called the potter's house. Look at verse 3. I went down to the potter's house. You've got to get up and do something. Even that, you've got to do something. Anyone can get saved by faith in Yeshua, but to become a disciple, you've got to follow him. He said to the Jews who believed in him, you're not my disciples, but if you can, but if, turn to your neighbor and say if. if. Let's try that again. If, if. If you continue in my word, then, when? Then, mm. then, mm. are you my Tommy team? You've got to do something. You've got to do. It's not just believe and fly away to heaven. <laughs> That's a Greco Roman mentality. The Hebraic mentality is the Abraham had to leave his father's house. Isaac had to bless his child. Jacob had to go work for Laban. It's 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 working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Yeah. But always being cognizant of the fact that you are the piece of work on that wheel, and that wheel will never stop spinning, and the wheel will never stop moving, and the wheel will never stop rotating. You are that work on the wheel. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Look at verse 4. Turn to your neighbor and say, You're the work on the wheel. You and I have the work on the wheel. But I want you to look at verse 4. I'm enveloped. I feel so good. I don't even, I don't even have to sit down much this morning. <laughs> my arthritis, my knee joints, my spooking and clunking and clicking and trunking and clunking and shifting. Done. The anointing is so strong, I don't even feel pain right now. When you're in the Ruach HaKodesh, you just feel rejuvenated by the Ruach HaKodesh. <laughs> No one's thinking about their FPL bill right now, I'll tell you that. No one's thinking about their cat having to be fed because right now you're so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good even, even if you try to be earthly. And that's a good place to be in the potter's house. Now look at verse 4. And the vessel that he made, notice, who made it? Yahweh. The wheel in the middle of the wheel, Ezekiel 121. The wheel that keeps the angels going, that created the earth. The wheel, he made the vessel of clay. But notice, it was ruined in the hand of the potter. So he remade it into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to do. Hello? Where was that clay? Where was that clay when he took it off the wheel? He, why did he take it off the wheel? To, to finish it. To finish it. But what did he notice? Marred. That vessel was marred. That vessel was, was, was not whole. That vessel, you and I, were not perfect. So what he did was the potter threw the clay away and decided to get himself another lump of clay. No, 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 no. <coughs> Is that what it says? No. Doesn't say that, does it? What did he do? He took that same, that same, now look, look verse 4, the, the vessel of clay, how many knows that he is the potter, we are the clay, and it was ruined in the hand of the potter. Well, how can that be? The potter is perfect. The potter is set apart. The potter is holy and blameless. He is Yahweh. What happened here? How could the vessel be marred in the hand of the potter? Because, brothers and sisters, 
the problem was not with the potter. The problem is with me and with you and with us. The clay is the problem. And so in the religious system, what they do is they cast away the clay and get a new lump. What happens when the toothpaste doesn't work? Get new toothpaste. What happens when the, uh, we burn the chicken? Buy a new chicken. What happens when we, uh, when we bake the, the cake, it's too, didn't come out just right? We get a new, a new dough, a new lump. But Yahweh loves us and is committed to us so that he takes the same, 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 same clay and molds it and shapes it and reworks that with the same vessel. Not until he gets another piece of clay, until he makes that marred clay into a new perfect vessel. Yeshua said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Yeshua said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. I change not. Yeshua said, he that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Religion will cast you out. The vessel was ruined. Life, flesh, and the, and the devil 